founder of choosingnursing.net. Today we're going to be talking about what you need to know before you take your NCLEX exam. Whether you're taking your test in you know, a couple of days or you're taking it in a couple of weeks, whatever the situation may look like, you're definitely going to want to stay tuned and listen to this entire video because I'm going to spill the beans for you on what it really takes and what you really need to know before you get started with the test. So the first one, number one, is that you need to know obviously the content covered in the eight categories of the exam. Now, if you go on over to the um, ncsbn.org website, you can actually go on their website and you can download their test plan, whether you're taking your RN exam or you're taking your LPN exam, you can download the test plan um, of either one of those exams. And what that's gonna do for you is that it's gonna give you a very um, detailed list of the variety of topics covered on the exam. So you want to make sure that you have a pretty good foundation on um, of the content, you know, and so that's why it's important that you know these areas. Uh, like I said, they are the eight categories. So whether it's the RN or the LPN, they're both eight categories. Um, so you want to make sure you take your time and you know, learn that information. Now, as far as how long you're gonna take is up to you, right? It's really gonna be a matter of how much time you're willing to commit per week to study for your test. All right, number two, the second thing you wanna know is when your ATT expires, okay? So the ATT expiration date is definitely very important. Um, as soon as that, as soon as you um, register for your test and they send you your authorization to test date, you want to know what that date is, right? So you want to know that so that way you have an idea of how much time you have to prepare to study and take your test. It can vary depending on where you are located because there's I've seen people who have um, gotten their ATT and they literally only had 40 days or 30 days to take their exam, right? And then I've seen people that got their ATT and they gave them a whole year. So you want to know what your expiration date is and that's something that you would be given um, directly in order to see what your ATT um, expiration date is. So that's number two. Number three is testing centers, right? So, you know, because of the pandemic, depending on when you're watching this video, the number of testing centers decreased significantly because we had to try and you know incorporate social distancing. So um, so and that's the reason why a lot of people could not take their tests when they want to take their exam. So you want to make sure that you do the, your due diligence and you do a little bit of the research and find out the available testing center sites based on where you live. So if you live hopefully in a pretty um, well um, populated area, there shouldn't be a test. There should be a testing center that's not too far from where you live. But if you live in a more remote area, you may have to drive a couple of hours to get to the testing center site. So it's important that you know that information up front uh, because that's going to definitely determine the times that you choose. Um, and the date that you choose to take your test. Okay, the fourth thing, I'm uh, sorry, the, the fourth thing, number four is how to best study, right? So how do you, what's the best way for you to study? And that's the thing that you're gonna make a decision based on a couple, a few factors. You know, one, um, when did you graduate from nursing school? Two, how confident you feel right now with the material, right? And then three, how much time that you have, right? So all of those things are going to make really, uh, all those variable factors are really going to influence how you how you should best study. Um, so you're going to want to think about all these things. If you feel like you need help with identifying how to best study, you can go to the link above or below this video and you can apply for a 
one-to-one -one phone consultation, a strategy session where we can work with you to help you to you know study and help you to pass your exam. Okay, the number, the next one is how to grasp or how to recognize what the questions are asking you. Now, here's the thing. There's different reasons why people struggle to answer questions. And a lot of times, one thing I tell people is that if you are weak with the patho, then you're not going to see how, what the question is asking you. So if you're weak with the pathophysiology, then, the, then it's going to affect your ability to recognize who to see first, what to do next, right? Does that sound familiar? All those type of priority questions and more. So you're going to have to really p get more clear on topics such as pathophysiology. Now, one resource that I highly recommend that's going to really help you in this area is Picmonic. Um, Picmonic is, is a great tool that they provide very visual um, trainings, teachings um, in their video portal that's going to really help you to better understand how patho plays a role, how visual learning plays a role, and that will help you your ability to retain the information, which will inadvertently help you to answer questions. So there's a link below this video if you want to learn more about Picmonic, I highly recommend that you, stay, you take advantage of it today, all right? The next one is finally how to find out if you passed or failed your exam, right? So, of course, this is a part where we're all very nervous about, but once you go through the process and you now you're going to, you know, t you took the test, how do you find out if you passed or failed? Now, I know for some people they do what you call like a Pearson view trick, which is a good pop-up or bad pop-up, pop-up, <laughs> sorry. Um, and so the reality is that you honestly just want to wait, you know, a couple more days uh, and get the true results because it may not always be accurate. I've seen people who got in the bad pop-up, but they still got their passing results. And so you're going to literally check uh, as well through your boards of nursing website, and that's how you're going to verify that you are a licensed nurse. Right, so you're going to verify, and then what will happen is that you'll see six numbers um, next to your name, which will show that you're a licensed um, nurse. Right, that's how you'll verify it. Literally, it will be up on the boards of nursing for your your state, and that's how you're going to see if you really passed um, your exam or not. Or you can also, I believe, verify with the ncsbn.org website. All right, so that is a sense um, essentially what you need to know before you take your ANCUS exam. Once again, if you feel like you really need help in this area or if you failed your test, go ahead and click below this video um, and you can schedule a, you can get access to our free training, which will give you an opportunity where you can, we can help you to pass your ANCUS exam. All right, I hope that you found this helpful and we'll see you in the very next training. Make sure that you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to this video if you have not already. Um, share the video too, definitely appreciate that, and we'll see you the very next time.